Welcome to the NMF Podcast with myself, Dennis Devon, and a very good evening to Tom Lumley and, of course, the Brave Leas. And good evening, Tom. Good evening. How are we doing? I'm all right, my friend. How are you? How's, how's your weekend been so far? How's everything been? Yeah, it was it was an all right weekend. Um, yeah, just pretty chilled out, really. And yourself? Yeah, quiet one, quiet one. It's obviously we're coming to the end of lockdown. Do you manage to get yourself out for a couple of beers? Yeah, we had a few beers over the weekend, watched some football and yeah. Did you watch the FA Cup final? Uh, I did. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm a Chelsea fan, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't ask the obvious question then. No, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, it is. It's one of them, I think VAR had a major part to play in it. I think one of the emotional parts is one minute you think you're back in the game and next second it's taken away from you very quickly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, that, that did hurt. <laughs> I could imagine, Tom. I, I've been suffering pain all season. I support a particular club in Scotland. It's been a very painful year this year, so I, I, I can relate to your pain, my friend. <laughs> I'm guessing it's another club with the initial CFC. <laughs> you, do you know what? You would be right with that. <laughs> we'll just move along swiftly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuart, tell us where your musical journey began. Um, well, as a kid growing up sort of thing, it, as embarrassing as it might be right now, I first like kind of got into music through Busted. <laughs> just no, when, that's I, cool. when I was very young, obviously, and you see three lads with a guitar and you want to be do the same sort of thing. Um, and then and then yeah, my neighbours that live next door to us, uh, the dad there, he kind of got me into Guns and Roses and ACDC and Led Zeppelin. Wow. And, it's a and big then, switch, isn't it? Yeah, it was a big switch, and then I picked the guitar up. Um, I always sort of just played guitar in bands until eventually when I was about 16, decided to give singing a crack as well. And we kind of went on from there. Yeah, you've got some fantastic music. Your voice is amazing. Is that you, the lead singer then? You're, you're the lead singer. I mean, what a voice, yeah. mate. What Thank a... you. Oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. I'm loving the music. Much appreciated. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I thoroughly do. So, Tom, who, who inspires you and what motivates you to produce your music? Um... It's a hard one, and as a band, we've all got slightly different inspirations. Like I know yeah. um, Billy, for example, the bassist, he's a big fan of Muse, and and Jake likes like bands like Weezer and stuff. But um, for me, it was kind of always the the sort of India side of things that inspired me, like your Arctic Monkeys and and Kings of Leon, and then and and now we're kind of at a point where we're all really hitting the middle ground with like the likes of the Amazons currently bands like that. So yeah. Yeah, you can hear how that, how the various musical genres comes through in your music. It's, you know, it's clear you all have an input. Would that be correct? Yeah, yeah, we we, we, we all have an input. Um, it's definitely, I mean, myself and Jake, the guitarist, um, over the last few years have been the sort of two to start the songs, write, write the songs and um, get in the studio and demo them. And then we put them to all the boys and um, lots of things change sort of thing but I think constantly being around each other and, and listening to each other's music as well you kind of obviously get different ideas from from that yeah I mean how how would you describe the creative process what's involved in your what's your day like in the studio it, I think it all depends on what we're doing um, if if we go in to, to record um, it's very much a feel like we've prepared ourselves for that point already we've worked on the songs in in demo stage as much as we can so you kind of we have our structure of going drums first bass then start layering it with guitars and different synths and, and ideas before adding the vocals um but yeah and, and any other days in the studio for us we're, we're lucky that our guitarist jake is actually uh um our producer he runs a studio that's his full-time job so we're lucky that we get to spend <laughs> we spend, Meet <laughs> yes and we get to spend a fair amount of time in there like doing the demos and, and rehearsing and stuff so yeah the studio for us is, a, is just a creative space we do all different things wow it sounds like a great place to be around you sound like a great bunch of lads you're obviously very close how did you all meet um so a bit of a weird one really um the reason why the, the band name is still kind of my name at first and then and then and then the band name is i was a solo artist for quite a while um just playing acoustically but i always knew that the, the sound that I wanted the music to be on, I was going to need to have a band around me. Yeah. Um, and I knew all three of the lads, but from different places. And um, Johnny, the drummer, he was a mate of mine's brother. He was really young at the time when he came on board. He was only 18 and the rest of us were like in our 20s. 
Um, then Billy, the bassist, uh, he was in another band that I'd gigged with as a solo artist in London a few times. So we kind of poached him from there. And then uh, Jake, uh, he'd been brought by a guy who came to our gigs. Um, he'd been brought with a guy to the gigs and he'd said to me about going and recording with him and, and it went on from there kind of thing. And none of the lads knew each other. Um, so it was, wow. it, was a, it was a big risk. Yeah, it could have gone Oof. completely wrong. But um, luckily, yeah, brought them all together and, and it seems to have worked out. So <laughs> it's been I think three and a half years now and we, we seem to, I'd say we, we get on a lot better now than we did on the first tour. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into that then. <laughs> yeah. no, there, was no major, there was no major disagreements, but obviously I think when you first get into know a group, when you put a group of lads like that in a, essentially in a tin can of a van for, for two weeks going around the UK there, you need to get used to each other a bit more. So, yeah. 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 You discover a lot about each other. You, you, you seem to have matured as a band. Yeah. And the music's I'd, definitely matured as well. I'd, I'd say so. Definitely. There's um, tracks that when, when I used to be just myself as Tom Lumley, the solo artist and the first tracks, because the first couple of tours we did, we, it was just under my name and essentially the boys at the time were session musicians. And then as it went on, we all we all agreed that we we acted so much as a band and and it needed to have a sort of band name to it. Um, so that was the reason for the change. But with the music, yeah, it's definitely changed. And since Jake's come on board, um, massive respect to Jake. He puts a lot of time into the songwriting as well, and he's definitely helped improve it. Just being able to bounce off of each other with ideas has been been really good. Yeah, that's brilliant. It would, it would be beneficial, and it's obviously he's a great bunch of lads. He's also got on very well because you can hear it in your music. You can always tell when you've got a group of together that are, that are just they just know each other, know each other like, and know how to put a track down. It's, it always helps, and he's clearly able to do that, Tom. Thank you. Really appreciate that. You're welcome, mate. For those who don't know you or your music, shame on them. They'll be getting a lesson after this. How would you describe your style of music to these new people? Um, style of music, we definitely, I think, fit into the kind of indie rock ca- category, maybe veering a bit more towards rock side of things at the moment. Um, yeah, just fast paced, um, exciting, snappy songs is probably what I'd go with. And and looking to the future, obviously, now COVID's over and done with now, and obviously pre COVID, how was, how was COVID for you guys? How did you just manage to go on? I think it was a weird one. It, we, we started 2020 um, getting picked by Radio 1 and Hugh Stevens as ones to watch. And we had a whole summer of festivals set up, tours. And it really felt like things were starting to move for us. And then, um, bang, COVID hit. And we had an EP announced for the middle of April, which was obviously in the first few COVID months, which we stuck with releasing. We still released it. So I think at first it hit us a bit in the face. We were a bit shocked. And then as we carried on pushing through, we carried on releasing music, um, doing live streams online. Um, and it definitely probably taught us more about social media and, and growing our social media fan base. And we've tried to keep the growth going with how we can online instead of obviously being out playing the shows. So, yeah, it's it, it's it. I think it's been a good thing in a way, obviously negative because we our favourite thing is to play shows. Yeah. Um, but good in a way. I think we've learned a lot. We've wrote, a, a serious amount of music which we're going to be working on over the next few months and, and releasing eventually um yeah and maybe in a, in, in a way it was also a nice step at first to step back and see how far we had come because we we're kind of just constantly touring or working and and at some points at times maybe you forget that although we're in a band together and it's essentially work to us we are friends as well so it's been nice yeah. to step back a little bit and n- also put a lot more time in working on different sides of it. Yeah, Tom, I hear a lot about that. I hear a lot of the, the bands that I talked to saying it was a period of reflection for them and a chance for them to look at what they've done, what they've produced, how to improve it, how to improvise and also, like I say, they are friends and how to kind of, you know, get a little bit closer to each other and look, look reflect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it's, uh, especially for the smaller lesser known bands like ourselves like when you're just constantly touring up and down the country um and you're you're trying to make something happen it is easy to get lost in the moment of not necessarily we have moments maybe that 
like selling out our local 200 person venue for the first time <clears throat> maybe we'll never experience that again and and you i think it's it's good to try and take those moments in as well because everyone dreams about the big stage and and the big moments but the smaller ones are just as important and, and all part of the journey well wow, that's humbling that's brilliant i was sure stevens i think wasn't it really a one who kind of gave you a bit of a break yeah definitely um it was it was a bit crazy like we never we got invited by bbc introducing to go sorry <coughs> sorry i've got a little bit of a cough that's okay um, buddy we got introduced uh, in, invited by bbc introducing to go to made of vale and record a uh, a live session there and then hugh stevens played one of the tracks from that session on on his show on radio one and from there on, the four singles that were released last year after that, um, he played all of them. So, yeah, it was he gave us so much support, support and a massive platform. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. He really is. And he's, he's, he's so supportive of independent music. I mean, obviously, looking to the future, uh, what can we expect from you guys? And do you have any plans to do any collaborations with anybody? Um, for what can you expect from us? Uh, definitely more music. Like I said, yes. we've been working on a lot, so there's definitely uh, music coming very soon. Oh, I'm excited. Um, yeah, and collaborations, I'm not sure at the moment. I think we've put a lot of focus into trying to find, make sure we've definitely found our sound. Um, so I think for now it will be focused on doing what we're doing, but we're always up for collaborating with different songwriters and stuff. So I'm sure soon and in the near future something will come about. There's been a, obviously with lockdown, there's been a massive explosion of new music and some new bands out there. Are there any new bands that's caught your eye and you thought, oh, oh, I like them, I like that? Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's so many good bands at the moment. It's it's crazy. Um, I literally wouldn't even. Sorry, I've got a really bad cough all of a sudden. I don't know where it's come from. It's all right, Tom. Honestly, <coughs> um, if, if we were in a studio, I'd be offering you a wee beer to help cool that throat. Yeah. Out. I don't even know where it's come from, just all of a sudden. Um, yeah, if, if I had to pick one, it'd probably be a band called Sarpa Salpa. Wow. And uh, if you haven't heard of them, check them out. They're, they're from uh, Northampton, I believe, and they're just awesome. They're really good. And then there's bands that we were just getting into before the lockdowns happened, like uh, Yonica and Kid Capici, if you've heard of either of them. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. Yonica, wow. awesome. Awesome band. So, yeah, they're... I th there, there's plenty of people that say like kind of there's not the same bands that they used to be and stuff but I think it's just a matter of people getting out there and, and seeing them because the UK right now is just full of talent it's amazing isn't it it's just the music industry in the UK especially for the independence it's just amazing it's just kicked off and it's it's we've been crying out for it for a long time Tom yeah definitely um, if you look at like obviously it's the obvious one that everyone goes to but the, the days of like Oasis and how big it was back then it feels like there's a real resurgence of guitar bands yeah. coming back through again now yeah absolutely i mean you can feel it i mean can we expect you on tour anytime soon and if so where might be able to see you guys live we're obviously putting covid restrictions aside yeah we're going to be um touring as much as we can from around like no october and november time so we've got a lot of shows booked in we're I've sadly not got anything booked in Scotland just yet, but we are working on it. We need to get you up to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, get you up to Loads of people have said that to us, so we are working on it. Um, but yeah, we're going to be all the way around the UK, Liverpool, Newcastle, hometown Cambridge, London, all sorts of places. So um, yeah, that's constantly, we're constantly pushing that on our social media, so you could, people can find that on there. And yeah. Uh, we, we promise that we will come to Scotland soon. Brilliant. It'd be great to see you guys up here. Looking at social media, how much of an impact has social media had on yourselves and the band? Um, yeah, I think it's massive. Um, social media obviously has a lot of bad sides to it and bad yeah. things that it's done to, to people necessarily. But for, for bands, it's a, a platform that was never there before. Um, to, to be able to get your music out, literally meet people on twitter like like yourself how i met you and share your music um with someone and and hope that they like it. it 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 was never there before you had to be out in venues and obviously hope then that people were there or were going to turn up so um i think it has got its negatives obviously um 
but but from a artist perspective it's definitely uh an amazing platform to be able to get out there a bit more yeah yeah it can have its negative side but when used correctly it can be excellent i mean tom you're not you're not you're not exactly new yourself you've toured you've done a lot yourself as a single artist or as a solo do you consider yourself a little bit of a veteran now um maybe a vet- veteran of the of like the uh <laughs> The, the small sweaty venues around the UK, the, the grassroots <laughs> yeah. independent venues, definitely. We've we've played quite a few now. Um, but yeah, we're obviously still, as a band, we've been together three years since we changed the name. I think it's just over a year and a half. So we've still got lot, lots to do, lots of growing to do, lots of different things that we want to do. Lots, lots on our bucket list yet still to achieve. So, yeah. And wow. uh, ho- hopefully we'll keep on growing. You've definitely got your feet tied to the ground anyway. It's clear that you're a very humble band. You know, you're very well respected, very well liked, and and I have to say, well received. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always nice to hear things like that. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. I always try to I always try to get a little plug in for people. So who helps you with production of albums, etc., photography? And is there anybody you'd like to say a thank you? And of course, this is where you can chuck in any little links if you want to anybody. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've got our management team at Twisted Melon and Fort Records, um, the label that we're, we're signed to as well. They're, they help us out endlessly. We've been able to do what we do. And then probably the biggest thank you has to go to um, Sam Lance, who is uh, does all our music videos and our photography. And yeah, he's like the, literally the fifth member of the band now. He, he's awesome. Every Everything you see of us visually is all down to him. So Sam Lance definitely gets the biggest shout out. Excellent, excellent. I always like to do that because I think yeah, sometimes these guys in the back room don't get the recognition. I always think they're amazing. Like you said, the other, they become part of your band. They almost become like your family almost. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Like Sam's been on the last two tours with us and lived all the mo- amazing moments that we have been in the Made of Vale studio. He came and videoed that for us. Um, like, yeah, loads, loads of things. So they definitely, everything has to go through Sam for approval as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom do you have any superstitions or rituals before you you play play live or play a gig I don't know really um one of the main things is not to get too drunk before you go on stage that's, the, <laughs> that's always the no we're very much um the boys might take the mick out of me sometimes but I've always been a believer of never any more than sort of like one or two beers before it's we're still there to do a job at the end of the day um and we want to be, always put on our best show so but I, I, we we're just the typical setup and then backstage just try and hype each other up as much as we can um and uh nothing in particular but yeah i've got some stupid vocal warm-ups that they take the the, the mick out of me for but that's about it <laughs> Just have some fun when you're recording your videos. There's uh, plenty of outtakes, I could imagine. Oh, there's yes, we we definitely have some fun when we record the videos with Sam. There's yeah. <laughs> Who's the Joker in the pack, Tom? Who's the Joker? Oh, there's always one. I don't know. It, it's hard. I think we all try and wind people up or each other as much <laughs> as one another. Johnny Johnny the drummer is definitely the uh, the dad joke of the uh, of the group. <laughs> He's, he's the youngest, but his his jokes are appalling. But there you go. Um, and prob- to be fair, probably Billy Billy's the biggest wind up because he just constantly like hides your stuff. I don't know why he's got an obsession with doing that, um, which is really frustrating when you're looking for something. And then it, there's been times where there's something serious that we're going to need in a show or something like that, and he's forgot that he's hid it, and then eventually goes, "Oh yeah, 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 I did hide that." There's always one. There's always yeah. one. What's the what is the best advice you've ever been given, and by whom? Um. Okay. Uh, there's there's one bit of advice that I've always kind of lived by, and I don't want to be because it will sound very name droppy now. But it was from Ed Sheeran. Um, yeah. It was when he'd released his first album, so he he was he was blowing up and had blown up, but it was still fairly early days for him. And uh, no, I, met, I was lucky enough to meet him backstage at a gig. And he just said to me that it's obviously such a hard industry with so many people wanting to do it. And it's the ones that just keep on going and going that, that will get there. And just basically said to keep writing. Good songs are going to come through. Bad songs are going to come through. Just got to keep going um, and never give up on it. And and like he pointed out, uh, 
a lot of the people that do make it they're they're a little bit older than than what we what we, when we want to make it if that makes sense because you, you have to mature yeah. you have to grow you have to learn how to write the better songs and uh and build a fan base and stuff so yeah i think ed sheeran saying just never stop keep going um is definitely the best advice i've been given yeah but only advice from ed he's a great and, guy and to be fair also my dad uh, when I was very young, he's regretted this since, but he told me if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, and that's yeah. probably my favourite thing. I've got that tattooed on me. And yeah, dad's definitely regretted telling me that one because uh, <laughs> I've always asked. Tom, I was raised in that. That's how I get these interviews. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't yeah. just send a question, then you just got to put the question out there and ask. You know, it's, it's great advice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you always regret it later. But, you know, I give that advice to my kids. If you don't ask, you don't know and you don't get. Yeah, it's, it, what the worst that's going to happen is someone's going to say no, and that's yeah, that's definitely. what it is. Yeah, no, it's just a yes in disguise. That's what a good salesman would say. <laughs> it's it, like I've always said: it, even if we email a hundred different people in the industry with our music, and they come back with no's, it's still your name imprinted in their brain a little bit more again, and and them getting to recognise who you are. It, it's all it's all exposure, and asking for anyone for anything is always going to help. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of talk in music industry just now, some of it's quite negative, about how they pay bands. For instance, some venues have got a bad reputation. One of the big complaints is about the payment for Spotify, for instance, and how yeah, how yeah. bands are treated. How do you feel the music industry is? And if you could change anything, what would you change? Yeah, definitely. Like, I think it's a, it's a really hard one because <coughs> with paying the bands with the venues and stuff, at the end of the day, the tickets need to be sold for the money to be there to pay the bands. Um, there is the rare occasion of of promoters that do take the mick out of bands, and obviously we don't agree with that. But and then and so with with that side of it, I think it just needs to be a fair mutual agreement between bands, promoters, venues that the money gets split evenly with the that, that's made on through the ticket sales because it's down to everyone involved, yeah. the artist and the promoter and the venue to push the show and sell the tickets. And then with Spotify. Obviously, it's taken away a massive chunk of money that bands used to earn off of album sales, which are not as high as what they used to be. So, spot with with that happening, Spotify. I think I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes with Spotify. That's we something might happen down the line soon of an increase in what bands get paid and stuff. And it needs to because otherwise, we won't have bands being able to live off of it and um, and continue to make music. Yeah. Yeah, I hear some horror stories. I mean, I've heard of bands doing, you know, live events and then coming out, spend, actually spending more than they're making, you know, because they they, they yeah, don't yeah. feel like they're getting treated in respect. And I think that's shocking. And I think that needs to change. Yeah, definitely. It, the majority of bands, especially the, the, playing grassroots venues and stuff like that, it, it's yeah it's hard and you're not going to make a living off it we've all we've all got day jobs as well of it as well as it so but but we love it and there's always a chance that it is gonna get somewhere and, and you'll be able to for me it's never been about being massively famous or anything like that just if you could earn like a, a normal living off of doing yeah. something you love then that's perfect a fair day's wage for a fair day's work yeah exactly yeah, CD, digital, or vinyl. I always ask this because it's amazing how many folk that say the same thing. So, CD, digital, or vinyl, Tom? Uh, it's a hard one because I do all three. Um, but I think for me, the one that I grew up with was CDs. So, it's probably the one that I always go to for. I like having something physical. And yeah, I, I guess with a CD, I still put CDs in the car and put them on. Uh, I think it's just obviously what I've always done. Um, but then sometimes now uh, I obviously do have Spotify as well and I do listen to music on that. And then I do have vinyls, but I kind of keep the vinyls. I, I very rarely play them. I love the whole art of a vinyl and, and, and keeping it in good condition. So I'm going to go CD. After all of that, we're, we're going to go CD. <laughs> I think it's so expensive, vinyl and all, and it? it's yeah, really it's double expensive. the price, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I grew up with vinyl, and it was it was my go-to. I loved a bit of vinyl, you know. Do you have any advice for any young, inspiring artists out there trying to break out or just learning the trade? Yeah, um, I mean, talk, you're a veteran now. I mean, you, you you'll have to. 
You have to sit down with a pipe and say, look, little, here's some advice. <laughs> I don't know about us being veterans, but um, I'd definitely say the most important thing at the start, definitely early on, is um, to get out and play locally. Um, just get involved in your local scene as much as possible. Interact with other bands, play shows with other bands. Um, the more you do that, the more people are going to hear who you are. The more you get out and play live, the tighter and better you're going to get as a band and, and you'll discover more about your sound. And um, So, yeah, just get out there, play uh, and get involved in your local scene. It was probably the best thing that we first did was really getting involved in our local scene and then it, it will build up from there and, and spread on to more of a national thing. Put it about better. Get it out, make sure it's heard yeah. and work hard. Definitely. Well, but at the same time also with... Still there, Tom? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, it flicked off a second. Also, with getting out there and stuff, with actually releasing music, never rush something or feel that you just need to to put a single out there because it's always best to take your time and know that it's at the best it can be and it's ready to go. So, yeah. That's excellent, Tom. That's one of the, that's some of the best advice I've ever taken. I mean, you're right, you know, don't rush it just because you think you've got to. Yeah. Release it when I suppose release it when you know it's what you want. It's not what you know. It's what you want. It's your music and it's how it sounds that you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. I really like that. Tom, see if you could open up for any act. If you just said, look, you know, you could open for any band or any act, past or present. Who would you most like to open up for? Who would you love to open up for? Who would be great? See, it's, we've been up. We've been asked this before, and I, the rest of the band kind of have always looked at me and gone why do you say that because I've always at the moment I say the Amazons but I guess it's just because that's the band that I really enjoy at the moment so yeah. you kind of want to tour with who you enjoy and, of course but it's nothing against them but obviously the rest of the band have said like well we're gonna go if we can pick anyone we're gonna go for like Muse or Led Zeppelin like the biggest that you can I guess, and they're right in a way, get yourself in front of the biggest audience you can get in front of. So, um, but I suppose, I suppose you're right. You want to, if you're, you want to play with people, a band that understands your music and you understand theirs and you have something in common, I suppose, just because they play in front of a hundred or a hundred thousand, ultimately, you want the, the audience to like your music. Oh, yeah. I've, we've, we've played gigs before we, to thousands of people. Um, and you feel like you don't gain anywhere near as much as a gig that we've played to a hundred people where the hundred people were all literally there sucked into the music, loving it, come up to you after the show and show their appreciation. And you've played bigger shows and it just felt like they were stood at the back of a room mainly with a beer talking and stuff. And it happens like that sometimes. What's the best so, venue you've played in and why? Best venue? Um, probably oh, what? <laughs> uh, yeah it's hard to pick there's some amazing venues around the uk but i'd probably have to pick a local one which is um we're from cambridge so uh in cambridge we've got the junction um they've got uh two main rooms there j1 and j2 j1's the bigger one which is 900 capacity um, and oh, j2 wow. is 400 um and we've played both um but we headlined j2 in the December, just before lockdown started, and we um, we sold it out ourselves, which was in, insane. Um, we kind of never expected to do that when we st started the band, so it was a, a big moment for us. Uh, so I think I'd have to go with J2 because of the memories we've got in it, and it's probably one of the nicest sounding rooms we've played as well, to be fair to it. What's been the most challenging thing to have? What's been the most challenging part of being in the band? Um, I think it's such a there's it's an industry where there's so many bands going for the same thing and there's only so many slots or yeah um opportunities obviously so i think there's a lot of rejection like a serious amount it's very cutthroat um and you've got to have tough skin really to keep on going through it so i think it's just i think we're pretty good at it but every now and again you'll have moments of you get yourself down a little bit when you're not getting certain things that you hope to get or that you've been pushing for certain radio plays or festival slots or support slots. Uh, so I think, yeah, just the, the rejection can be harsh. And and obviously when you get that rejection, I'm, I'm guessing that family are, and friends are, are very supportive and probably you're relying on quite a lot. Always, yeah. Um, 
yeah, I like to think I'm 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 pretty thick skinned with it all, and I've always been like, if someone says no, it, it I just I don't know why it makes me want to do more then and try harder um because everything that we've got that we've really ever wanted like festivals that we've dreamed about isle of white festival i mean we were emailing people organizers um promoters at the festival for three four years maybe longer than that with them saying no before we actually got a slot and every time i get a no it kind of makes me want to try harder and and when you get something then it, you really do appreciate it yeah you again you you it's a very humble, you're very down to earth guy. You seem to know what you want. You know how to get there, but you're not well. You, you're not the type of guys to stand on people to get there. And I, I do like that. And, I, and they come again. These can your kind of bands come across in your music. You know, you can tell you they're honest. You can tell you they're hard working. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, it's really nice to hear. Um, but yeah, definitely, like you said, with not standing on other people, it. it this industry and the way it is at the moment, every, all the bands need to support each other, which is definitely something that's there in the UK at the moment. It's like you said, there's so many amazing bands, but it really does feel like all the way around the UK now, we've got friends in bands from Scotland all the way down to Southampton and everyone supports each other. And it's a really good scene to be a part of. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds amazing right now. Listen to my always ask this. If you're offered a role in w, 007, right, but you okay. couldn't be James Bond, who would you like to be? What would your character be? Good or bad? What would you call it? Okay, this is... Um, I might disappoint here, and this is where we could maybe do with the rest of the band, but I've never watched James Bond. <laughs> no! No, I just... I don't know why. I've just never... It, never. I never took to it, never got into it, but... Um, so I can't really compare myself to a character. I, I'm not sure what what to go with, to be honest. <laughs> See, my name like Tom Lumley and James Bond. You'd have to be a good guy, wouldn't you? You'd have to be MI6 or something like. We'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll go with a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah you'd have to be. Yeah. Oh, Special Agent Lumley. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Special Agent Lumley. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you guys? Embarrassing thing that's happened to us. Um, yeah. Come on. We all, I've heard stories of guys getting on stage and forgetting to turn the ramps on. I've, I've heard horrendous stories. <laughs> oh, we, yeah. Well, no, we've, we've had some. We, there's definitely been some bad things. I remember. Oh, I remember one show and um, it didn't go down very well. But as Jake was about to go into a guitar solo, I accidentally stood on his guitar lead and pulled it out his pedal board. Um, <laughs> And essentially, he went to play, and there was just no noise. Uh, that didn't go down very well. Um, <laughs> I could imagine you were very unpopular. Yeah, um, very, very early doors. And like I said, we've always been a professional band that don't. We like to be as professional as we can and not drink too much. But um, I was playing. This was actually not with the band. This was before that. And I was playing for a mate's birthday, twenty first birthday. So it, it, there was quite a few drinks there, and. Um, Someone made me do a Jaeger bomb whilst I was kind of in the middle of the of, of a song, <laughs> and then I drank a lot already, and I went oh, for a dear. No, and a little bit of puke came out. Um, <laughs> so I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that, but but no one saw. Uh, I don't know how, but no one saw. Um, so yeah, I have slightly puked on stage before, and I think that's probably up there. I have a new segment. I call it the confession. Okay, this is very important, this, Tom. Yes. This is your moment where you don't have to say who it is, you have done something naughty, and you want to confess and say sorry. Oh, okay. Um, see, I can't, I, I can't deal with guilt, so I always tell people what I've done, and it, it normally revolves nicking my sister's food. Um <laughs> I can I I can't, I can't I can't actually tell you something right now that I've not admitted to, but I could tell you a, a story of my sister had bought these cookies from this place in London, and um, she'd left them on the side. And she, she, the thing she said to me when well, there was one left, and the thing she said to me when she left the house was, "Do not touch the cookie," because um, <laughs> she knows what I'm like. I, I'm a nightmare for food. Um, so she she left the house. I ate my dinner. I looked there and I looked at the cookie and I. I opened it, I took it out of the bag, I went, nah, you can't put it back. I opened it, I said to myself, if you take one bite, 
it's going to be all right. It's not going to be that bad. But then there was only a quarter of the cookie left. And um, <laughs> did you put it back? <laughs> I just put the quarter back and said I didn't eat it all. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So um, uh, yeah, I, I was it, it, it. Yeah, didn't go down too well. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we can apologise to your sister, that's all moved on forgiveness is in the cards, you are blessed and you are forgiven, you can move on from that Tom and that memory can now be wiped out and your sister has to forgive you from this day forth Thank you, yeah, no, that'd be nice, cause it's been four or five years now and she's still not forgiven me <laughs> yeah, has to forgive you now, the confession is out there yeah. and Dennis has spoken, you have been blessed you can move on now, we'll forgive you for that one Thank although you. I still can't believe you put the quarter back Yeah <laughs> That's even rough. <laughs> well, I got to the end of it and I got to the quarter bit and I thought I've really messed up here. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just haven't got the goal to go about a little bit. No, no, I'll, no. I'll stop myself and I'll put the last bit back. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I guess this is what you have to listen to my show. I always ask is if you were trapped in an elevator, who would you least likely want to be trapped in an elevator with? Who would you least like to be trapped in an elevator with? Well, I'm trying to think of like someone that it's hard because I, you think of like celebrities on telly that that don't know you're a Chelsea that, fan. That, oh, cool. fan, you know there could be a few out there that you might not want to be trapped in an elevator with right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd like to be uh, stuck in an elevator with um, the VAR um, officials. Yeah, that, that yeah, right. We're going with that because that's the easy cop out. Yeah, yeah, done. That's not a cop out. No, I think that was so tight. I think we've lost the plot a little bit because if that was me, I'd be livid. And to me, I'm not saying he wasn't offside, but the margins were so thin. Is it really worth it? I actually thought it took away the actual run. It took away how a wonderful run, because I yeah. saw the run coming and I thought, Brilliant. you know, Vars destroyed what is potentially a fantastic move, a great pass to see the run of that boy. And you know, it just seemed harsh. It just I've I've spoke to several Leicester fans since that have all said if it's the other way around they'd be fuming. So uh, it's it's one of those ones where VAR maybe has done it, corrected a few things in football, but it, it's ruined a lot of things as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that one. I would have. Well, look, Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Uh, I have to say, I love your music. Uh, I think, like I say, I think you're a very mature band who are definitely going places. Uh, <laughs> would you like to introduce your current single? Yeah, so um, this is our latest single. It's out everywhere now. You can stream it um, on all the usual platforms or buy it on iTunes. And uh, it's called Crawling. I'm Dennis Devon, this is the Enemy Podcast, and I've just been talking to Tom Lumley. And of course, this is their latest single. <laughs> Want me back?